Hey, it's Fernbark here, and this is my Ryobi 2200 uh, inverter generator. And an idea I had a while back while I was brainstorming was that uh, these things have an inverter in them, but you're not using it unless the engine's running. So why not hook a battery up to it and run the inverter off the battery, and then when the batteries die down, uh, disconnect it from the battery, hook it back up to the motor and then you know recharge your batteries and get electricity well, here's the so here's the flaw in the plan what this device actually does is it creates AC current and sends it through this wire harness to this inverter right here and then what it does is it takes that and turns it into DC current and then turns it back into the 120 AC current that we know and love so this kind of explains why these wires are so thin because they're pro uh, probably high voltage low amperage and then it gets massaged through this device back out into the business world the question I have is uh, would anybody know what voltage this might be operating at and uh, here these two wires are DC come off of DC windings I have no idea what their purpose is and finally does anybody know how this goes back together well, while we have the unit apart, let's take a look at uh, the rest of the inside of this thing. Here's, uh, I got a couple of air filters right here, just a couple of foam. Guys, they pull out are easy to look inside and inspect. Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting is uh, it's hard to see with the case over the top, but this is where your dipstick is. And just like my uh, Briggs & Stratton generator, there's a little bit of a lip right here I'm trying to show it without getting my finger in the way uh, and then right underneath here let's see if I can get the camera in here it's right here where the you can put the oil in and drain it out there's a little bit of a, a plastic thing it's actually a, a tube or a chute that goes all the way to the bottom so when you're draining the oil out it's going to catch into this little area and not spill all over the place so you could easily just put a pan right underneath the generator and catch it all without it making a big mess which is uh, a nice thought that I didn't even know was there and you would probably never see it unless you take the whole cover off and then what you have here is a little drain tube uh, going up to the carburetor so uh, I've had gas pour out of there before and I wondered what was going on and I guess uh, you know if you pull the string too many times you, when you flood the carburetor it'll drain out of there and, and it goes right down to the same drain spot that the oil would go to so you're not messing up the inside of your generator anything wrong with this setup okay that's better also explains why this cover was so hard to put on with this knob poking over here so uh, yeah good for one of these every time 